We're here now in the stratosphere chamber, which is where Brooklyn's museum keeps a number of its aircraft engines. We're actually here to see a very significant engine. It's called the Rolls-Royce Neen. It may not look like much, but actually when it was built, it was not only the most powerful turbojet engine in the world, but it was also an engine that founded the industries in a number of different countries. The story goes back to 1942. At the end of 1942, Rolls-Royce, with the government approval, took over from the Rover Car Company the manufacturing and development of Frank Whittle's turbojets, which of course at that stage were somewhat experimental. Rolls-Royce put in charge a gentleman called Stanley Hooker, who was a rather extraordinary physicist and engineer who understood, perhaps better than almost anyone in the world, apart from Frank Whittle, how air compressed and what one could do to exploit the compression of air. He'd been in charge of Rolls-Royce's um, turbocharger or supercharger business, and it was natural that he should be appointed to lead the jet engine industry. This was taking place at a place called Barnoldswick in Lancashire. And that's a significant name. Remember the letter B for later on. Initially, Stanley Hooker developed the Whittle engines, including producing the Rolls-Royce Welland, which was the production version of the Whittle W2, and also the Rolls-Royce Derwent, which was a developed version of it. But in 1943, the British government issued a requirement for a rather larger engine that was to have a thrust of 4,000 pounds. Early in 1944, Stanley Hooker did a rather surreptitious visit to America to see what was going on there in the area of jet engines. And he discovered that the General Electric Company was actually producing an engine that was going to be 4,000 pounds of thrust and was already running. And at that point, Stanley Hooker decided that whatever engine he was produced next had to have a thrust of at least 5,000 pounds. So the competition was on. Amazingly, Hooker, when he came back to England with his team at Barnoldswick, developed a completely new engine that was Stanley Hooker's own design that was designed to produce 5,000 pounds of thrust. And indeed, when it first ran, it produced somewhat less than that, but with a few modifications over the next few days, Hooker got it running in a record time at 5,000 pounds of thrust. The problem was that the engine was actually too powerful for any aircraft that were then existing or even on the drawing board in this country. And two things happened. One was at perhaps the idea of Frank Whittle, we're not quite sure, they decided to reduce the engine in size by about 75%, almost a, a kind of photographic reduction of the engine design. And that produced a smaller but very powerful and very light engine that they rather confusingly ended also calling a Derwent, but a Derwent 5. The Rolls-Royce Neen, however, still had its claim to fame ahead of it. First of all, Vickers decided as an experiment to take the existing piston engines out of a Vickers Viking and put two Neens in instead, which, as you can imagine, not only produced the world's first jet-propelled transport aircraft, but also one with the most extraordinary performance. Uh, again, it was not commercially viable, it was still wartime. But eventually the Neen did go to a number of marine aircraft built by both uh, Vickers Supermarine and Hawkers. But it's perhaps its lasting legacy is the fact that, rather surprisingly, at the end of the Second World War, the British government donated a number of Neen engines to Russia. The Russians, being rather clever engineers, uh, back-engineered the Neen and called it the Klimov VK-1. And that really formed the basis for their ongoing uh, aircraft engine industry. Uh, then, perhaps even more cheekily, the Russians actually licensed their Klimov VK-1 to the Chinese. So they also produced 
an engine that was effectively a copy of the Neen, called the Vopen. What that meant was that a number of different countries can thank the design of this Rolls-Royce Neen and Stanley Hooker for starting their industries, because Rolls-Royce also licensed it to the United States, where Pratt & Whitney took it up, to Canada, where it was taken up by the Arenda Company, and also to France, where it was taken up by Hispano Suiza. So a significant engine, although one that was not used very much in its country of origin.